I bought a drill press, folks. Okay, as none of you probably know, I've been wanting a drill press for a long time. And I've kind of been looking at this one. This is a 10 inch, 12 speed central machinery drill press from Harbor Freight. And uh, I've been looking at this thing for a while. And I've been waiting for it to go on sale. <clears throat> and it finally did. Uh, it was on. It was normally one hundred and thirty nine ninety nine, and I got it on sale for ninety nine ninety nine. So forty bucks off, which comes out to about thirty percent, roughly. So I picked up this bad boy for a hundred bucks, and. We're going to check it out and see if it's worth it. Unbox it. Everyone loves a good unboxing. Now this box is pretty badly damaged. So uh, we don't know what we might find in here. We might find some broken parts. We might find or not find some missing parts. Who knows? First thing we got is some books, file them. First thing after the books is our table, which uh, seems to be made of just not cast steel. Uh, it's not cast. It's got uh, some welds in here. Uh, pretty chewed up here. Uh, that could have been from this horrible packaging mishap. The reason I got this one, it was the last one they had. And I didn't have very many opportunities to get there to, to buy this. And I wanted to get the sale been waiting for the sale for a long time. So, I figure if it's damaged, I could return it. I ain't going to return it for this. But, uh, here's the table. And, uh, okay. That's that. Here's the handles. Okay. We got the base here, which is also not cast. Uh, this is just some kind of stamped, uh, whatever, cold rolled steel. And there's some sort of a, it's not a machined finish, but it's like a, I don't know, a sanded finish or something. Uh, same thing with the uh, same thing with this. Actually, this looks like it might have been machined, but who knows? <clears throat> and here we have some sort of a ring collar type thing. Some badly damaged styrofoam. File that. And we got a plasticky handle here. This is a plastic handle. PA, whatever that is. And we got a box here that contains the chuck and the key. Okay. We got a uh, this is the riser thingy do which uh, 
is pretty thinnish type metal kind of pressed into this little cast looks and feels like aluminum cast aluminum base maybe and then we got the drill itself which is here like this so we're going to proceed to put this whole thing together I should have some screws in them so far somewhere and I should have some oh here's a thing for the table to go up and down on and here's their hardware Hopefully nothing's missing because this package is slightly open. Looks like there's three bolts in there, some washers, uh, this, some kind of bracket. Oh, I don't know what this is yet, but anyways, all right, so. Get started. Okay, to start with, we'll take the base, stick that on there, and looks like we have all our washers and bolts and stuff. So we'll take this and get these started. And these actually are going to take a 14. In case you're following along at home. Try the 9 16th. The 14 doesn't fit perfectly on it, but uh, the 9 16th is even worse. So we're going with the 14. Okay, now we're going to put this table on. We got to take this a piece, stick it through there, and then put it all on at once. Like so. And then we'll take this ring dealio, stick that on there and they gave us some allen wrenches and we'll just tighten this bad boy up and that'll hold it from coming out and we should be able to spin all the way around okay and we'll give this a Extra tighten for good measure. I don't reckon I'm going to be moving this around much, but if I do, I'll probably put some oil on there. Tighten this up. I got to be honest, so far this seems a little chintzy, but wasn't expecting anything great. It's not. Terrible. Not terrible. Okay, then we take the top part and stick it on there. Like so. And we'll get her pretty lined up. Can always adjust it later. It's pretty good though. And we'll go for this. Allen screw here, which is the same one. Came with two Allen wrenches. Uh, we're gonna, so far we're just using the one. I want to over tighten it. Okay, 
that's on. Take this plastic handle, which I'll be honest, doesn't feel great. Does not feel great. And let me get a screwdriver and tighten this up slightly. This seems like something I could over tighten and break. So we'll be careful to not do that. And let's loosen this up. And the cranking system seems to work. No problem. Not really putting that much force on this handle, so as long as I don't bang into it with something, should be okay. So, okay, now there is a second Allen screw right here that I just noticed I missed, and that needs to be tightened too. This thing didn't go on far enough. Loosen this one back up and see if we can get this to go on further. There we go. Try that. Okay, now we're tightening against something here. So that's something you might have to watch for if you're putting one of these together. And we'll make sure we get this tight. And that should be pretty good. Okay, next I'll thread these handles on. No problem there. Okay. Handles are on. We seem to have some action here. Okay, that feels okay-ish. And then the last part to go on is this little knobby thing which goes right here. So I'll take the screw out, comes all put together. Like that. Run the screw through the inside. Run this on from the outside. And this could probably be bent a little. So that needed a wee bit of adjustment. This is a little flimsy, but not bad. And it looks like the position we're in now is 470 RPMs. If we look here, there's a little diagram here inside the lid. And this is the configuration that it came from the factory so we'll leave that like that for now and finally the last thing we'll do is put the chuck on now this is a 5 8 inch chuck uh, the smallest bit this will hold is an eighth inch bit which is okay for me because that's typically about as small as I go for most of the stuff I do but if you want to chuck anything with a smaller bit than an eighth inch, this won't work. Pop that on there and give it a little whap. That should be good. Okay, so if you run this down and you get it lined up just right, you can use this wedge tool that comes with it 
and stick it in there and you can use that to wedge out to, to pop the arbor out if you needed to chain put a different arbor in there all right I've checked the uh, trueness of the bit with a square and it seems to be pretty pretty close to straight and square it's got about a let's see two and two and five eighths of travel so and we got our little stop gauge on the side here which I haven't messed with yet and I assume you set it for well if we set it at one we'll see what happens That gives us probably one inch, one inch of travel. So you just set it for however far you want the thing to travel. It says here, it says the spindle stroke is two and three eighths, but I found that to be. Uh, underestimated. It actually goes two and five eighths. Uh, the speeds are 300 RPMs to 2900 RPMs depending on your belt situation. So in conclusion it's not a bad drill press. For a hundred bucks I can't really beat it. It's got a lot of options for speeds, which is nice. It's true and accurate enough for a home gamer like myself. And it's got a nice, uh, the depth gauge on it is nice. Uh, I might end up screwing it down to something. It's not real heavy. Uh, it's not super heavy duty, uh, but that's okay. Uh, I couldn't imagine having a smaller one than this. If I have any problems with it, I'll let you know. And I also got a set of Forstner bits, uh, which was normally 10 bucks. I used a 25% off coupon, and I got it for $7.50, and my free gift was the set of batteries. Alright folks, I gotta go. Adios.